I wish to announce for the information of the House that the President, accepting, uh, sorry, acting on my advice, has accepted the resignations of Deputies Harney, Dempsey, Ahern, O'Keefe and Killeen as members of the Government. I advised the House yesterday of the resignation of Deputy Martin. I want to put on the record of the House my gratitude to each of them for their distinguished contribution to the work of the Government and to the country. As Minister for Health and Children, Mary Harney has advanced a strategic approach to tackling the problems in our health services. She's done a first-class job and shown extraordinary endurance and intelligence in dealing with a most challenging portfolio. In her previous world as Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment and as Tawnish, she made an enduring contribution to developing the economic base of this country. Noel Dempsey has served this country well in a variety of portfolios. At the Cabinet table, he was a straight-talking, respected colleague, forceful in his contribution and a loyal supporter of government decisions. His achievements as a Minister are many. As Minister for Transport in this Government, he has brought forward significant legislation and initiatives which have reduced the number of road deaths in Ireland, thus saving many lives. Dermot O'Hearn has been a reforming Justice Minister who has carried out his duties with great ability and commitment to the public good. He too has many achievements, including the recent groundbreaking anti-gangland legislation. I also served with Dermot in the governments of Bertie O'Hearn and saw at first hand the strong contribution he made to the Irish peace process from its inception and his role as envoy for the UN Secretary General. As Minister for Foreign Affairs in this government, Michal Martin has represented this country with distinction at home and abroad. I especially want to place on the record of the House my gratitude to him for the work he has done to bring further significant progress in the political landscape in Northern Ireland. The Hillsborough Agreement last February opened a new and positive chapter for the people of Northern Ireland and Michal's political skills were crucial to that outcome. Deputy Martin is a politician of substance who has served the people extremely well in the Departments of Education and Science, Enterprise, Trade and Employment, Health and Children and in Foreign Affairs. <coughs> Pat O'Keefe has been one of my best friends in politics and in life, and he's a politician of great wisdom, intelligence and loyalty. He's been a hard-working public representative for over a quarter of a century, and he has come to a decision not to contest the next election. From our discussions, I know that Bat shares my assessment that there is a need to have more young people in government as a necessary source of renewal and vitality in our politics. He has made a major contribution to the government. As Minister for Education and Science, he placed at centre stage the debate on how we are to resource our universities and institutes of technology to make them the best in the world. He embarked on radical programmes of school curriculum reform, including Project Maths. As Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Innovation, he ensured significant and tailored investment in the enterprise and innovation agencies, which are now helping to drive export-led recovery. He turned a policy focus on commercialised research and set in motion the implementation of the report of the Innovation Task Force. It was my great pleasure to appoint Tony Killeen, Minister for Defence, in March last year. Although his time in the Department of Defence was brief, he was responsible for a number of significant developments. He oversaw the successful completion of the Defence Force's UN mission from Chad last summer and announced a new peacekeeping deployment to the Lebanon just before Christmas. Overall, his was a wise and sensible voice at Cabinet during some of the most challenging times ever faced by an Irish Government. I want to again express my gratitude to each of the aforementioned deputies and wish them well for the future. We are all aware in this House of the immense challenges that each member and every member of this administration has faced in charting a way through some of the most difficult economic times since the foundation of the State. I believe that history will show that the Government has worked hard in the national interest to implement difficult but necessary decisions to help lead our country through an international economic and financial crisis, the likes of which we have not seen in over 80 years. The Government under my leadership has followed a consistent path to help stabilise the economy in the aftermath of the biggest downturn in modern Irish economic history. Our budgetary strategy has helped to stabilise the economy and return it to economic growth. And I understand that people are suffering and experiencing immense hardship because of the recession, which we deeply regret. It's incumbent on all of us in public office to put the interests of this country above everything else. Politics, as usual, shouldn't be allowed to distract from the overriding priority of getting Ireland back on track. And I said previously there will be a general election this spring, but before that the Government has important work to complete. The Government has obtained approval for its National Recovery Plan, provided the proper funding of the State through the negotiation of the EU IMF package. It will give us the time and space to continue on a path of adjustment, to restore economic growth and thereby create jobs. And it will allow us to continue bringing our public finances back to order while providing necessary public services for our people. I believe it is important in the weeks ahead that the Government gives legislative effect to the Budget through the enactment of the Finance Bill and other related bills which benefit the people. 
There is nothing more important than doing precisely that. In the interest of proper governance, I have now decided to reassign the portfolios of those ministers who have resigned. Pursuant to Section 4.1 of the Ministers and Secretaries Amendment Act 1946, I am assigning their departments as follows. The Department of Health and Children to the Tarnished and Minister for Education and Skills, Mary Coughlin. The Department of Transport to the Minister for Community Ed Equality and Granted Affairs, Pat Carey. The Department of Justice and Law Reform to the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, Brendan Smith. The Department of Enterprise, Trade and Innovation to the Minister for Tourism, Court, Sport and Culture, Mary Hannafin. And the Department of Defence to the Minister for Social Protection, Eamon O'Quiv. The main task of government I have led from the beginning has been to secure the best interests of the nation in these challenging times. We have made hard choices and taken unpopular decisions in the interest of the security and well-being of the people. I believe the best interests of Ireland demand that government gets on with implementing the National Recovery Plan by passing the Finance Bill and other legislation, and that a new government then receives a new mandate from the people at a general election. Until then, as Taoiseach, my priorities, along with that of my government colleagues, will continue to be returning Ireland to recovery, creating jobs and restoring the public finances. It is my intention in due course to seek a dissolution of Dáil Éireann with a view to a general election taking place on Friday the 11th of March next. Prior to the general election, we are committed to enacting key pieces of legislation to secure Ireland's economic future. I know that this government's policies are returning Ireland to recovery and growth, and I want us to get through the hard times and see the country prosper uh, in the future. To do that, we need now at this crucial time to get on with the important work in hand. As Taoiseach, my focus today and every day until Election Day is on completing the work I have undertaken on behalf of the people to continue the process of implementing that economic recovery plan.